In World War I, there was one truly innovative and profoundly effective weapon, the tank. It had only been used towards the end of the war, but its potential was obvious. In the interwar years, the vehicle was developed even further, with the turret of design being one of the favourites. The tank was built in increasingly different types and numbers by every major nation in the world, with better guns, thicker armour and more sophisticated suspension. Like many nations at the beginning of World War II, the Soviet Union was trying to get its head around how to deal with this phenomenal weapon. The Germans were a strong proponent of the tank and they had used it to devastating effect in their Polish and French campaigns. The Germans incorporated this weapon into their Blitzkrieg strategy, an offensive carried out with great speed, surprise and force, using air power and mechanised ground units in close coordination. Conventional thinking at the time was that the best way to defeat a tank was with another tank or anti-tank guns. The infantryman was expected to use hand grenades or anti-tank rifles, both of which were rapidly becoming less effective as tank armour got thicker and thicker. In 1941, the Soviet Union did try to counter this by introducing the new PTRS-41 Simonov anti-tank rifle, which could penetrate 40mm of armour at 300 feet, about 91.5 metres. But at the same time, the Germans introduced the Panzer IV medium tank, which had frontal armour of 50mm. This meant the tank could only be attacked at fairly short range from the side or rear. The Simonov was not without its issues. It was difficult to use, unreliable and clumsy to operate due to its weight of 46 pounds, almost 21 kilograms. There were also never enough of them to go around. The Soviet Union started to look for innovative solutions to supplement their shortfall in anti-tank capabilities. They decided to deploy dogs carrying explosives to attack the soft underbelly of enemy tanks. The idea of using anti-tank dogs was nothing new for the Soviet Union. They had looked at the possibility back in the early 1930s and gave the weapon the name Dog Mines or Hundminen. It's easy to dismiss this idea as some kind of impractical novelty. It seems ridiculous to think that bomb carrying dogs could ever be viable weapons, especially against tanks. But there is a long history of animals being put to imaginative uses in warfare. From the war elephants used by Persians in the 3rd century BC to carrier pigeons being used during World War I for long range communication. Both were highly successful. So by 1935, the Soviet army was setting up dedicated anti-tank dog units. Training the dogs was simple. They took a Pavlov's theory type approach. Pavlov's theory is where you condition someone to associate a reward with an action. The example Pavlov used was ringing a bell whenever a dog was fed. The dog would then drool when it heard the bell as it associated the bell with food. This is called a conditioned response. The Russians would half starve the dogs and then put food under a stationary tank. Over time, the dog would be conditioned to instinctively search under tanks for food. The original idea was that the dog would be equipped with a bomb that could be detonated using a timer or remote control. The dog was trained to run under a tank where it would release its bomb by using its teeth to remove the strap holding the bomb. Then it would run back to its handler. In tests, it was a complete failure. If the dogs were confronted with anything but the most simplest of scenarios, they became confused and were unable to complete their mission. They often returned to their handlers with the dummy bomb still attached. If that happened with a real bomb on a timer, the consequences could have been fatal to the handler and any Soviet troops nearby. But then came the surprise German invasion of 1941 and the onslaught it brought. The Soviets began to deploy their Hundmen and units. They were desperate and needed to stem the flow of ever increasing numbers of Germans as Operation Barbarossa gained momentum. Operation Barbarossa was the Axis surprise invasion of the Soviet Union led by the German armed forces. It began on June 22, 1941 and involved an invading force of nearly 3 million soldiers, 9,000 aircraft and around 11,000 tanks. By now the equipment and tactics used by the Russians were starting to become standardised. Various breeds of dogs were used but the most commonly used was the Alsatian German Shepherd which ironically was a German breed of dog. It is well known for its agility, stamina, intelligence and trainability. The bomb now used was of a contact type rather than the complex and flawed timer or remote control version. 
The dogs now carried a bomb with about 25 pounds, 11 kilograms of explosive, contained in a set of pouches, one on either side of the animal. Once the bomb was activated, by removing the safety pin, an 8 inch wooden spring lever that was sticking out of the top connected to the two pouches. If the lever came into contact with anything and was pushed back sufficiently far, the bomb would detonate. As the dogs were trained to run under a tank, it was anticipated that the bottom of the tank would set off the bomb. As the armour was normally very weak here, it was hoped that the ensuing explosion would at least disable the tank, if not destroy it completely. The first group of anti-tank dogs arrived at the front line at the end of the summer of 1941 and included 30 dogs and 40 trainers. Their deployment revealed some serious problems. In order to save fuel and ammunition, dogs had been trained on tanks which stood still and did not fire their guns. In the field, the dogs refused to dive under moving tanks. Some persistent dogs ran near the tanks, waiting for them to stop, but were shot in the process. Gunfire from the tanks scared away many of the dogs. They would run back to the trenches and often detonated the charge upon jumping in, killing Soviet soldiers. To prevent this, the returning dogs had to be shot, often by their controllers, and this made the trainers unwilling to work with new dogs. Some went so far as to say that the army did not stop at sacrificing people to the war and went on to slaughter dogs too. Those who openly criticised the programme were persecuted by quote, special departments. Out of the first group of 30 dogs, only four managed to detonate their bombs near the German tanks, inflicting an unknown amount of damage. Six exploded upon returning to the Soviet trenches, killing and injuring soldiers. Three dogs were shot by German troops and taken away without attempts by the Soviets to prevent this, which provided examples of the detonation mechanism to the Germans. A captured German officer later reported that they learned of the anti-tank dog design from the dead animals and considered the program desperate and inefficient. A German propaganda campaign sought to discredit the Red Army, saying that the Soviet soldiers refused to fight and send dogs instead. On the other hand, it seems the Soviets boasted of great successes. They claimed that at Stalingrad between 1942 and 1943, the dogs destroyed 13 tanks. Then at Kursk in 1943, a further 16 were destroyed. It was alleged that the Hundmännen destroyed a total of around 300 enemy tanks, although records show the more likely number was nearer 50 tanks. The truth is we will never know what their true effectiveness was. However, considering the obvious drawbacks and the fact that they were only deployed for a short time, it would seem reasonable to say that anti-tank dogs were a novel idea with limited value, deployed only out of necessity. After 1942, the use of anti-tank dogs by the Red Army rapidly declined and training schools were redirected to producing the more needed mine-seeking and delivery dogs. However, training of anti-tank dogs continued after World War II until June 1996.